Welcome everybody to this webinar, which will give you an introduction to the basics of chromatography. My name is Birke Götz and I'm Global Product Manager for Purification and Vichy Labor Technik in Switzerland. Chromatography belongs to the main steps in the isolation and purification of compounds used as drugs, flavors or fragrances. And I will shortly explain the whole workflow on this slide. So these compounds get in a first step either chemically synthesized or extracted from plants, bacteria or any other living organism. After this follows the first concentration step via evaporation. And this is done to decrease the sample's volume for an easier handling in the following steps. Now, if the sample is completely new for you, you will now start to screen for the optimal condition for your separation. And that's done via analytical chromatography, such as TLC or HPLC. TLC, which is thin layer chromatography, is a rather cheap and simple method and for sure the first choice here. For analytical HPLC, you need a special equipment, which is not always available in a lab. As mentioned, this step is needed to find the optimal condition, which is here related to the stationary and mobile phase. And that is crucial to know for the following upscaling procedure to preparative chromatography. And in this preparative step, the target compound gets purified in high quantities, either by flash chromatography or prep HPC, or usually both together. And in this case, flash, flash is used for repurification and prep HPC for the final high resolution step. I will explain the differences between these two techniques on my next slide, but first of all, let's go on here. After the separation of the compounds, a second concentration step follows, either by evaporation or freeze drying. And finally, the compound is ready for analysis of its purity and function. So now let's see what is the difference between flash and prep HPLC. I also added some info here on analytical HPLC, just for a better understanding, but clearly this webinar is referred to preparative chromatography. In flash chromatography, everything is rather big. The particle size of the silica, the column ID, the flow rate and the loading capacity. And this is the big advantage of flash, the high loading capacity. Depending on the size of the cartridge, you can load up to 300 gram sample. In wrap HPLC, this is completely different. The loading is rather low, also the flow rate and the column ID. And very important, also the particle size is rather small. And this is the reason for the high purities which you can achieve with this method. Because the smaller the particle size, the higher the resolution, and with this, the purity of the target compound. So both techniques have their pros and cons, and that's why actually a combination of both is the most efficient way for your purification. While talking about purification, chromatography is not the only technique to separate compounds. The user has other choices as well crystallization, filtration, liquid-liquid extraction, or distillation. But clearly, chromatography is the only method which allows you to separate all compounds of a complex mixture, and this makes it requisite in most chemical labs. And besides this, chromatography is a method which is used since more than 100 years, so there are a lot of data available and experience especially for drug development. Now, what is the general set setup of a liquid chromatographic system? That's explained here. First of all, there is a solvent delivery system needed, which controls the delivery of the solvents to the pump. There is a sample injection system, which allows the loading of the sample onto the cartridge or the cartridge. Then there is a pump, which is responsible for pushing the solvents and the sample through the whole system, including the cartridge. And this is actually the place where the separation happens. So the compounds of the mixture get separated in the cartridge or the column. 
The next step is the detection of the components coming from the cartridge. And finally, in the fraction collector, the compounds get either collected into glass tubes or they are passed into the waste. And that's it. Now, since the separation takes place in the cartridge or the column, let's see what's actually happening there. In a cartridge or column, we have the stationary phase, which is usually silica. Then there is the mobile phase, which is usually a mixture of two solvents. And there is the sample, which usually contains several compounds which need to be separated. And the separation happens because the compounds show different adsorption and desorption behaviors onto and off the stationary phase. So, the compounds always switch between mobile phase and stationary phase. Adsorption means the attraction to the silica. Desorption is just the opposite. A substance with a strong adsorption behavior, such as the circles here, will need more time to run through the column than a substance with a strong desorption behavior, such as the squares. And since every substance behaves differently, it's possible to get them separated. Typical terminologies in the absorption chromatography are normal phase and reverse phase. These are actually two different ways to purify the compounds. And the difference is the polarity of the stationary and the mobile phase, as shown here on this slide. On the left side, the stationary phase is more polar, indicated in blue, while the solvent, so the mobile phase, is more unpolar, indicated in orange. And on the right side, it's just the opposite. And by the way, normal phase is called normal because this is how it started several decades ago. And only around 1970, the reversed phase with the opposite polarity was developed. And since then, it's used and becoming more and more famous. Let's go into detail for normal phase first. As said, the stationary phase is polar and the run is usually started under unpolar conditions, such as hexane. So the unpolar compounds of a mixture prefer to stay with hexane and elute first, while the polar compounds bind to the stationary phase so they have a longer and stronger interaction with the silica. And they can only get eluded by increasing the polarity of the solvent, and that's usually done with ethyl acetate. So this phase is typically used for polar compounds because what you want is a certain retention or interaction of your co target compound with the stationary phase because with this you have the highest chance to get it separated from the other compounds in your mixture. So as soon as you have a rather polar compound soluble in a mixture of hexane and ethyl acetate, normal phase is the first choice for you. In case you can't solve your compounds in hexane and ethyl acetate, you can also try a mixture of DCM and methanol, which is also frequently used for normal phase applications. As you can see from this table, DCM and methanol have a higher polarity than hexane and ethyl acetate. And with this, uh, they are more useful, for example, for the purification of acids, amines, or alcohols. As already mentioned, reverse phase is just the opposite of normal phase. So the stationary phase is unpolar, the solvents are more polar. And typical solvents here are a mixture of water with usually methanol. So as soon as you have a rather unpolar mixture compatible with those, go for reversed phase. Other common solvents used in a mixture with water are ethanol or acetonitrile. Which one you finally use depends first of all on your sample, but there are also other parameters such as toxicity, viscosity or costs may also have a certain influence on your decision. So, for example, ethanol has the lowest toxicity and it's rather cheap. 
but you might run into troubles with the back pressure generated by its viscosity in combination with water. And then you need a pump which can handle that high back pressure. And that's different for acetonitrile. There, is nearly, there are nearly no viscosity issues, but it's high in costs and high in toxicity. Now, what is exactly a normal phase stationary phase? In more than 90%, it's silica, which is silicium dioxide, commonly found in nature as quartz and in various living organisms. The silica particles are available in different sizes and shapes, um, and they have a high loading capacity because they are highly porous. They are cheap and therefore optimal for your day-to-day -day application. The pure silica is also known as unbonded silica, and it has a highly polar surface due to the silanol sites. In reversed phase, a modified, modified silica is used. In most cases, it's C18 alkyl chains, which are bonded to the silica, and which makes the surface more unpolar. And therefore, it's optimal for the purification of hydrophobic or less polar compounds. Other phases are using shorter chains, such as C4 or C8, which make the surface less hydrophobic and useful for mid-polar compounds. But clearly, C18 is always the first choice for reverse phase. Other bonded phases are amino and diol. Their polarity is somewhere between silica and C18, and they can be used in reverse phase as well as in normal phase solvent systems. Amino is well known for the separation of carbohydrates, while diol is optimal, for example, for lipid separations. Another material used for normal phase applications is alumina, but it's not nearly as popular as silica. But there are some advantages of alumina over silica. And this is, first of all, the stability over a wide pH range from 2 to 12. And it is available in three different types, acidic, neutral, and basic. So, for example, if you have a compound which is uh, acidic or acid sensitive, um, then you could try alumina, the neutral alumina, because silica is a little bit more acidic. So it can happen that you don't get a separation of your compounds which are acidic sensitive. Um, another advantage of the alumina is uh, because there are these three types available that um, you can avoid using pH modifiers. And last but not least, alumina just has a different selectivity than silica and therefore it's worthwhile to give it a try. We learned now what normal phase and reverse phase is. So now let's go for a short summary of the pros and the cons. A big or an important pro of the normal phase is you can use organic solvents and those can be easily evaporated after separation. The cartridges are rather cheap and silica has a high loading capacity. The cons are these organic solvents are more expensive and they feature safety environmental concerns. And the cartridges usually can be used only once. For reverse phase, the situation is completely different. The pro and the most important one is actually the cartridges can be used several times. So they can be cleaned after the run and stored and can be reused. Also, a pro, a pro is um, water is a cheap solvent and it has no environmental concerns. But on the other side, water is also a problem 
for in reverse phase because it's uh, not so easy to remove it um, by evaporation after the separation. That's challenging. Also, what we already heard is that some solvents, or let's say a mixture of solvents, have high viscosities and that leads to a high back pressure. And then you need to be sure that your pump can handle the high back pressure. Also, these reverse phase cartridges, because they are, this is modified silica, they are rather expensive. So 10 times of a normal phase cartridge. And they also have a lower loading capacity compared to normal phase. So that's it from my side. I hope you learned a bit on basic chromatography. Thank you for your attention.